Hey, Theo. Hey, Travis. Hey, buddy. Hey, man, this is Josh, Southern Indiana. Travis, seen you in concert a couple times. Always remember the tribute to Waylon Jennings. Tell me how he influenced your life and your singing. Thanks, man. Gang, gang. Gang, brother. And I'll, and I'll, t- and I'll tack on to that question. Thank you for the question, man, and, and I love you, brother. Thank you for submitting that. And, um, yeah, you kind of got accepted by, like, the... You got that that dirty thumbs up from the bad boys in a weird way, you know, which was, what was that kind of like, you know? And I guess what role did kind of Waylon play in that? And, um, yeah. Waylon told me that first time I met him, he, um, I was getting ready to leave. We came into the dressing room. We were playing a show together at the Omni in Atlanta. And, uh, and you're younger than him by how much? Oh, I, I know that, but by, by how much? a lot. Okay. Um, 20 something years, 30 wow. something years. So do you are is it like when you were spending time with them is it I mean it's almost like it's like a 7th grader being around a ninth grader I'm oh, assuming kind and of that. And he was vibe. a hero of right. mine. I mean, I loved everything about him before I ever met him. I loved his singing voice, I loved his songwriting, I loved his guitar picking. I loved everything about him. But one of the things I loved about him was he was not afraid to do things his own way. And um he sat me down in his dressing room that first that first time we ever met and he said, "Listen, I've been Listen, Hoss, I've been hearing all the stuff that they've been saying about you in Nashville and on these radio stations. He said, let me just remind you that everything that they are saying about you now is exactly what they said about me and about Willie Nelson and Johnny Cash and Hank Williams Jr. and David Allen Coe. All He just goes down the list. And he said, let me ask you a question. He said, "Um, are you still selling records and i said yeah i said man i've been lucky everything i've done so far sold platinum or better a million copies are better and he's he said well are you still drawing people into your shows i said yeah man we're playing huge arenas and they're sold out he said listen those are the people you should care about their opinion Mm. because all these people in nashville they're saying all this stuff about you they get their their music for free he said, these people that come out there, he said, those are the people that work hard 40, 50, 60 hours a week to put food on the table for their families. Yeah. And he said, and they're willing to spend a certain amount of that hard-earned money to buy your music every time you put out new music. And occasionally they'll splurge for a concert ticket to come see you when you play in their hometown he said those are the only people that matter and as long as you're pleasing them which you obviously are to hell with all the rest of these people yeah and man that was like an epiphany for me um and it also it took a tremendous amount of weight off of my shoulders because i realized at that particular point waylon and all the rest of those guys that were labeled as outlaws they got that label by simply doing the same thing that I was doing, which is just wanting to do my music my own way and do show my influences, all my influences, which were very widespread. I, lo- I grew up, country was always my center, George Jones, Merle Haggard. That was my center, but I also grew up loving the Almond Brothers, Leonard Skinner, Marshall Tucker Band, yeah. Charlie Daniels, and then of course the Eagles and Boston and and Fleetwood Mac and you know all this other stuff, and then blues. I was always a blues fan, still am. Your voice has a lot of it, man. When I listen to some of your tunes, I'm like, man, this reminds me. There are moments where it goes into a guy go- like a light gospel, you know yeah. what I'm saying, or a light. Uh, it takes me through like the different neighborhoods that were, you know, adjacent to the neighborhoods I grew up in. Mm-hmm. It takes me through. There's just, uh, yeah, I, I can really, I can feel some of that, man. Well, Mississippi, man. I mean, that's so much great <laughs> blues stuff came out of there, you know, and uh, that's one of the reasons why that was that was always a staple. If you take if you take bluegrass and if you take um, uh, blues and straight ahead country and southern rock and mix all those together and then sprinkle a little bit of southern gospel over the top of it that's gospel baby that's me looking for the lord man that's like jerry clower he ended up being a pastor at the end of his time i think yeah i think so he was a preacher at the end of his time so. here's a a picture right here you go back to that sean here's a picture of you and uh and mr jennings right here is it kind of interesting to see this photo 
Oh, yeah. That was the first time we met. Really? That was right before we had that conversation that I just told you about. And was he like, uh, did he carry himself like an outlaw? Kind oh, of he did. He had that Jesse James vibe a little, huh? His give a shitter was totally broken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't care. Dude, that's awesome, man. Yeah, man. To have that yeah. moment right there. Yeah, that was the first night. And did he have any traditions that you noticed kind of backstage? Or what was kind of, did he have any? I, As far as traditions, I don't, you know... Uh, were you I, allowed to spend time with him backstage before the yeah. show? We kind of like to be by himself, or did he? No, he was he was always really good about you know. Anytime I was around, he and I, we, Waylon was one of the kind of people. If he liked you, he let you know it. Mm. And uh, one of his favorite sayings that uh, that I remember was because a lot of people they would talk about man when you do this many shows, do you warm up or do you how do you prepare for a show? <laughs> Waylon's favorite answer to that question was, I get up off whatever I'm sitting on and go out and play music for people. That's what I do. <laughs> and that answer alone just gives you an idea of what his, yeah. his, 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 he was just cool, man. Yeah. A cool guy and a guy that was just, you know, wanting to do his kind of music his own way. And that's what, what he was going to do. And he didn't give a shit what anybody thought about that. I love that. Hope you enjoyed that video, and you can watch another, and you can watch this one, you can watch this one. Different options, different choices. Some guy just brings you one option, not this guy. Two options. Watch one. This one or this one.